I grew, uh, I grew up in southern Indiana in uh, a very rural uh, town of about 15,000 uh, people in the city. Uh, uh, countywide, probably like 35,000 altogether, a very small. Um, my graduating class was like 350, though. You know, the whole county went to one high school. That's how small it was, you know. For one county, they only have one high school. I, I would guess it's very small, you know. But um, the impact that Oxycontins did to my community was just very overwhelming. And uh, took everybody by surprise and very quickly, you know. Uh, for it to have hit the shelves in 96, you know, by 99, 2000, uh, there was, I, I would say, close to like 40%, 40, 50% of my graduating class was like, hooked on this stuff, you know, and uh, it, it hit about my class and then all of the classes after me, you know, the classes before me, not so much, unless if they didn't move away from town or go to college, the people that stayed around, those people tended to eventually get uh, hooked on them as well, but, um, you know, uh, I've had so many friends that have died from this stuff, you know, there was a group of mothers that had kids affected by this that were, you know, writing their congressmen and their state re legislative, legislative uh, representatives right and left and, you know, just going through so many different outlets trying to let them know that there was a epidemic happening back in like 2000, 2001 and two and three and four, you know, <clears throat> before, you know, and it seemed like it took, you know, 10 years and X amount of deaths and, and for certain, basically, the affluent white suburbia people to be affected by it before people really started to recognize it and quit being in denial about it, you know. Which at that point, it was just too late. I mean, I guess it's never too late, but, you know, um, in a sense, you know, to me, it, 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 it like, it's, it's already done its damage to my, to me and everybody I knew, you know, that was not addicts on, you know, they might have smoked weed or whatever, but they were, they were you know, they were, made good grades, they were hardworking individuals, you know, that had goals and aspirations to do this and that, and it was all gone, you know. This drug just took everybody's ambition and goals away from them, just stripped them of the life they were gonna have, and put some of them in jail, and killed some of them, and put a lot of them in a donut hole of rehab, back and forth, and <clears throat> for those who could afford it, you know. And, uh... Can you talk about specifically your friends, my school, things like that, what was it like? Where did, how did it hit, so? Well, my junior year, it hit, and I wasn't using them at that point, and um, 
it was people that were outside of my circle that was using them. And there was a few people that were in my circle, but not the closest friend of mine, but I could see the changes that they'd make. They, would, they weren't coming to the house parties that we were having with, where we would just drink beer and play cards and euchre, you know, play euchre and drink some beers. It was like they were going to these, to the certain, to their own little party, but they weren't having a party. They were just there, like they might as well have been dead, you know what I mean? But I ended up doing my first oxy about a year and a half later. And I was just like, oh, this is the greatest stuff in the world, you know? Um, and uh, it, uh, it grabbed me and uh, I, I became an addict. And uh, I got away from it by joining the military Thank God, you know, uh, it was the best thing I'd ever did. But I can't say that for the rest of everybody else, you know. More, pe more people, by the time I got out of the military, more people had died. The other half had started shooting up at this point. Um, other people had been to jail or, you know, I mean. And I had got hurt and started getting prescribing painkillers. <clears throat> and I had I'd been clean for like four years. And I started getting prescribed Oxycontins like a year later. And I just knew in the back of my head that I was done for, you know. There was you know, like your gut, when your gut's telling you or whatever, there was something telling me, you know, Chris, you know. If you're smart, you wouldn't let this doctor give these to you, you know. But there was that addict that was, in the, that I had used to be, was saying, you know, this is, you know, this, to take him, you know, to just keep my mouth shut and let him prescribe what he wants to prescribe me. And he did, and you know, and I, I took him as prescribed for just maybe a few months, and uh, went through that whole cycle again, <clears throat> and ended up in rehab. You know, got clean. You know, I've gotten clean, and if it, it, and whether it was four months clean, six months clean, four years clean, or whatever, you know. Something would always tell me, oh, I can do it, you know. You know, I'd run into it at some point because everybody in my town was still doing this shit, you know. Like, oh, I'll just do it tonight or whatever, you know. And, and after rehab, I always knew that I could get them prescribed because I had this chronic pain, you know, that there was no recommended surgery for, you know, and, uh, which was like a curse, <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, I could always just go get a prescription. Damn this thing. 